guys. Happy Sunday. Only a one week countdown until uh, we meet back together again for Sunday worship. So looking really forward to it. Uh, can't wait to see you guys there. Um, so as you may have heard, False Creek got cancelled and I did make a video uh, announcing what we're going to do instead. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, basically we're going to go to Broken Bow uh, in a nice cabin. And we're going to have a nice little retreat there on the same days, uh, July 8th through the 10th. All right? uh, the cost is $70 a person and um, you need to bring money or if you want to pack a lunch on the way up. Uh, and you also need to bring money uh, for dinner on the way down. Okay. Uh, but other than that, uh, bedding will be provided, so you just need to bring change of clothes, toiletries, etc, etc. Um, I'll have registration forms shortly, uh, but since there is so much time until then, I, um, I'll try to get it to you guys by uh, maybe mid uh, beginning of June. Uh, Super Summer has unfortunately been cancelled on campus, but they are doing Super Sundays um, every Sunday uh, for, the, for the month of June. So. Uh, if you want to be involved in that, uh, we'll have a, we'll have like a time where we can get together, watch it, do some discussion questions, um, and, and just kind of fellowship together at that point too. Uh, just remember that you know Super Summer was a leadership retreat, and so if you feel like you want to be a leader, or if you feel like you already are a leader, um, then this is definitely what something that you then you should do. Uh, so we'll talk more about that. Let's see. Um, summer schedule. Summer schedule will be up um, by the first week of June. Uh, well, actually, it'll be up next Sunday at the at the latest. Um, so summer schedule will be up next Sunday at the latest. I'll try to get it to you uh, sometime this week. Uh, just remember that because of the situation, some of those plans might get mixed around and shuffled, um, but we're still gonna be able to enjoy summer and you know spend some time uh, hanging out, uh, worshiping, and the things that we should have been doing beforehand. And last but not least by any stretch of the imagination, um, when Sunday services start up again next week, we need a lot of volunteers to help out, whether it be ushers or greeters. Um, we definitely need people who are willing to be friendly and, and just kind of serve. And so this is a great opportunity for the youth to step up, guys. So I really do want to encourage you, if you're going to be there anyways, might as well come and help out, right? Uh, so we're going to need basically greeters at the door handing out, pamp uh, handing out our, uh, well, so we're going to need greeters at the door, making sure that um, nobody has to touch doorknobs. Uh, we also need um, ushers to help guide people to their seats. And so if that's something that you could do, because that's something that anybody can do, um, please help out. All right. Talk to me, talk to the pastor, uh, whoever you feel comfortable talking to, just throw your name in there and we'll tell you what to do. Okay. Uh, and that's all I have for announcements today. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get started. So this week I wanted to try something a little bit different um, Before we go into any of the message any of the lesson um, We're gonna take some time and read the passage beforehand, okay? Uh, but before you do I want to give you a little bit of context, okay? So the book of Psalm uh, The book of Psalms was uh, was written by a lot of different people Okay, so it, uh, 72 of them were written by David and then, um, you know, a couple of other writers as well. Um, but it starts uh, from way back when, honestly, there's, there's some Psalms that were written even by Moses. Um, and so these poems or, or these little uh, bits of literature that we use, um, it spans the entirety of Israel's history. And so, uh, looking at the psalm, we could see something that was happening to the writer, um, you know, when it was written. And so, in, in David's psalms, we often see him uh, even just fighting to survive, right? And him relying on God each and every day for that survival. Uh, today's psalm, uh, Psalm 119, 
is written about the Bible. And so primarily it's written about God's Word and it's uh, honestly the longest chapter in the book of Psalms, which isn't hard because you know they're all like half a page. Um, but the, uh, Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the book of Psalms and it's written about God's Word. And so that's what we're gonna read uh, before we start today and I'm not gonna make you read um, you know, too much, uh, but it's Psalms 119 uh, verses 1 through 10. And so you just have to read those 10 verses. Uh, and when you read them, really think on it, all right? I don't want you guys just uh, looking at the words off a page. I want you to actually think about, um, you know, why it was written. What was the meaning behind it? What, what was the writer feeling when he wrote it, right? And, and so take, a t take some time, uh, pause the video, and read through Psalm 119 verses 1 through 10. And then when you're done, I want you to unpause the video, then we can get, uh, we can keep going, okay? So hopefully you read it. Um, I want to start off with one of our key points, which is that uh, the hunger to know God more is the mark of a true disciple, all right? And one of the main ways that that hunger gets satisfied uh, is when we meet God in His Word. And so that's what the book, uh, that's what the chapter in, uh, of Psalm that we read today um, is talking about, right? So what does it mean for someone to be blameless? The dictionary defines blameless as innocent of wrongdoing, right? But does that mean that we're perfect? Does that mean that they've never done anything wrong in their life? Absolutely not. Right? So in this case, um, the meaning of blameless could be talking about heart and character. And so, my first discussion question for you is, what are some ways that we can all walk uh, blamelessly in our everyday lives? So Psalm 119.4 uh, goes like this, you have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. And so to be kept diligently or, or fully obeyed in, in certain translations, um, we have to approach spending time in scripture differently, right? So if you want to fully obey something, if you want to fully obey, let's say the rules of your school or the laws uh, of your country, you have to know what they are to obey them, right? The way that we study scripture, the way that we study God's word should drastically change if that's something that's a purpose of ours, like this Psalm suggests that we do. And so for us to uh, fully obey or for us to diligently um, keep his precepts, we have to know each and every one of them. And so why is it so important for, for a disciple to, to keep God's word, right? And what does it communicate to a, to a lost uh, uh, or a dying world when we're inconsistent with keeping it? Because we can point people to the Bible whenever we want, right? Like, you see someone stealing, oh, stealing's a sin, it's in the Ten Commandments, right? Adultery's a sin, um, you know, you should love your neighbor, you should do this, you should do that. And it's really easy for us to say these things, uh, but it's even harder for us to keep it, especially if we're inconsistent with the way that we're teaching it to the world. And so let's move on to Psalm 119, 5 through 8. All right, so we're going to go uh, verses 5 through 8, and it looks something like this. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes, then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. And so why do you think David under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, put an emphasis on praising uh, with an upright heart. The heart is, is so important as Christians, right? Where our heart is when we do certain things, especially in our walk with God, determines basically the value of that action. And so you could, you know, you could follow all the rules that God has set for you, right? Like a lot of those Pharisees and Sadducees did. And if your heart's in the wrong place the entire time, what did Jesus call them? He called them whitewashed tombs. And so if our heart is in the wrong place, if our heart is dead, then no matter how many of God's rules that we follow, they're basically nothing. 
So with that in mind, how are you reading the Bible? When you read the Bible, do you read it for the sake of reading it? Do you read it because I make you read it? Or do you read it because someone reads it to you? And if you're not reading it with an approach of just seeking God, then there's no way that God's going to be able to, to give you all of what you need um, through that scripture. And so the way that your heart is, is going to determine um, the value uh, of what you're going to get out of that scripture. And so one of the reasons that we can get into kind of like this lazy, apathetic um, ideology when we read the Bible is because we think of it as a checklist. We think of it as something to do for the day and we're done. And that's a very dangerous approach to reading the Bible because yes, it is important to read your Bible every day. That is a fact. But how you approach that reading uh, dictates what's going to happen to it, right? And so think of the Bible not as, uh, you know, doing your daily deeds for the day and marking it done, but rather in the same way that you would probably want to talk to your parents every day or your best friend every day. Uh, that's the mindset that we need to approach. So Psalms 119 verses 9 through 10 goes like this. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. So most Christians would probably tell you with their mouths that they want to lead uh, a wholesome life. They want to lead pure lives and they want to fully seek the things that God has prepared for them, right? Um, but when you start asking them how, many t how much time they spend in God's word, um, in order to make that a reality, you sometimes get a blank look. We can't really try to live pure, holy lives outside of God. And we can't say that we desire to know God, uh, but not engage with Him in His Word. It just doesn't make sense. So leading pure, holy lives, in, especially in today's world, is, is tough. It's incredibly difficult, but it's not impossible. See, um, and this is where um, that really popular verse, right? Philippians 4.13 comes in. I can do all things through Christ. This is where you apply that. This is where that verse becomes handy because we are no longer bound by our own power and our own experience uh, to live holy lives, right? So the burden is completely taken off of us and that's great news, right? We follow through in obedience, uh, but that holy, pure life that comes not from finding our own way, but by following God's way. The hardest part, the most difficult, challenging aspect of leading a pure holy life is how do you lead a pure holy life, right? And God's already answered that part for you. So you get the easy part where all you say is, okay God, yes God, and you follow through. So there's a danger that comes with uh, leading a half-hearted Christian life, right? And that's because it's not biblical Christianity. Right? And I know it might be tough to hear, but it, that's the truth. Right? Jesus mentions in the New Testament what'll happen to lukewarm Christians and the dangers uh, of becoming that. We have to seek God with all of our heart. Like there can't be any in-betweens. And so uh, if we go back to verse 10, it talks about wandering from his commandments. It talks about straying from his word. And so it's so easy to do that because we are fallen human beings, right? We were, oh my gosh, Josh, worst time to text me. And so if we look back on verse 10, we see that um, he says to not let us wander from his commandments, right? To, to not let us stray from his guidance. And the reason that that could be so easy is because we were once, uh, we are fallen human beings, right? We are susceptible to all the distractions and all the temptations that this world has to offer. However, this cannot and should not be an excuse. So throughout this week, I wanna challenge you guys, all right? I want you to, to start thinking uh, about how much time you spend 
in God's word every day. Right? And so Sunday, right after you watch this, if you have time, So this week I want to challenge you guys, uh, right after you watch this video, uh, just, you know, think about how much time you spent in His Word each, uh, every day for the past week, right? And really think about if you spent that time intentionally, if you spent that time uh, actively listening to what He has for you, or if you just read through it to mark off a checklist. And guys, this isn't this isn't just an immature young Christian thing, right? This is something that that I could struggle with, that Rebecca could struggle with, that the pastor could struggle with, that anybody could struggle with in Christianity it is becoming lazy and apathetic to what God's word says. It's so easy to fall into that temptation, which is why it's so important for us to understand um, how we need to approach uh, reading God's word. And so, uh, think about the time that you spent, if it was meaningful, if it was intentional, like I said, and if you feel like you come to an answer that, you know, is anything short of yes, uh, then I want you to reevaluate and make some changes. Because this is the perfect time uh, when you're cooped up at home, you got nothing to do, right? Make some changes in your daily life. Spend some time in His Word. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time listening to what he has for you. Right? So, I love you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys next week in person. Bye.